Wildfires are a bigger problem than ever. Tens of millions of Americans facing another round of air quality alerts due to heavy smoke from those Canadian wildfires. And it's getting worse. NASA satellites detect more than a million large fires worldwide every year. The Western United States, for example, has seen uh, larger fires in each of the last several years and more intense burning. And many times those fires spread faster, making them more difficult to put out and more dangerous for the communities who live in that vicinity. But what if I told you new hardware and strides in computer vision and machine learning means we can detect them early and stop them in their tracks? We could avert billions of dollars in damage, but more importantly, save lives, homes, and avert tragedy. Today, we're sitting down with Pano founder and CEO, Sonia Kastner, to find out how this works. Let's get started. Right now, someone literally has to call in a fire, and by the time someone can get to it, sometimes it's a mega blaze. At Pano, we are uh, using hardware, software, and artificial intelligence to deliver actionable intelligence that allows emergency managers to contain fires while they're still small. And we do this by first deploying a proprietary network of mountaintop cameras uh, on high vantage points. We rotate the cameras 360 degrees. We send the images through an AI algorithm that detects the first wisps of smoke. And then we crop out a time-lapse video and push that video to first responders across multiple agencies, city, county, state, federal. They all get alerted simultaneously and provided with powerful visual intelligence that creates a call to action and allows them to have a common operating picture and start collaborating within minutes. And so this allows fire authorities to get to the fire with a really aggressive response in the first hour when the fire is say five to 10 acres and nip it in the butt before it ever becomes a large mega fire. The crazy thing about technology today is that computers can now see. What if you could have eyes up in the air being able to triangulate where the fire is at any moment? Most fires today are still detected by a bystander who happens to see the fire and call 911. The time for this detection varies depending on how populated the area is and just luck. When a bystander calls and says they see a fire, only one out of 20 of those calls are actually a real wildfire. So you can't start an aggressive air ground attack on the fire based on just a 911 call. Uh, it would be too wasteful. So when a 911 caller calls in, uh, there's a mandatory confirmation step where a single fire engine, usually at the city level, is dispatched to go confirm the location, the severity that, that it's even a real fire. And only then can the coordinated attack begin. So with technology like Panos, we detect the fire with AI. We can confirm it instantaneously using the camera data as ground truth. We push out uh, information about that fire to all the agencies simultaneously, and that coordination happens within minutes. Pano's way of early detection of wildfires before they become catastrophic is a lot like cancer detection and treatment. It's better if you can do it early. You detect the fire at stage one, you hit it with really aggressive treatment, and you prevent it from ever becoming stage four. And they're able to do this by utilizing heavy equipment that they have already purchased for mega fires. They have planes, they have helicopters, they have bulldozers. They're used to using this equipment for 10,000 acre fires. But now they're realizing that if they use this equipment and these state level federal resources on a five acre, 10 acre fire, it can be super effective and prevent it from becoming a mega fire in the first place. When founders start, the very best seem to find a very intense problem to solve. Pano is no exception to that. You know, Pano was uh, founded in July of 2020. Two months later, the sky turned blood red over San Francisco, and we knew we had no time to waste. We had to get going. We went out and raised venture capital funding. We hired a world-class team of technologists and former firefighters, and we started building. And within nine months, we were in market with pilots in 2021. In 2022, we were doing commercial deployments, and this year we'll be deploying hundreds of, of stations all across the world. Uh, we're in six states already in the U.S., two states in Australia, and that's just the beginning. 
The crazy thing now is what started in 2020 is now becoming an annual, worse and worse thing. It wasn't like when we were kids, but here we are with an ever growing problem on our hands. But we also heard a, a general theme from the firefighting community that climate change is making wildfires more frequent and more severe. Fires are spreading faster because of faster winds and drier fuels. We can't just keep asking firefighters to work longer and longer hours in more and more dangerous conditions. The firefighting community was looking to technology to be a force multiplier. And you know, when you speak to folks from the firefighting community, they say, we're still using technology from the 70s. We have leftover helicopters from the Vietnam War. We're using two-way radios for communication. Uh, sometimes we print out paper maps, but we know that, especially when we talk to stakeholders from California, they said, hey, we know what's going on here in Silicon Valley. We know that there's satellite technology, drone technology, artificial intelligence, camera technology. There were reports coming out of Governor Newsom's office saying, please, private sector, build us some technology tools using all of this modern day stuff. And we looked around and nobody was answering the call. And that was really the motivation behind Pano. You would imagine that the state of California with all its funding and ingenuity and smart people would be able to find a way to make this happen. But that's the reality. Even with intense abundance, it still takes an incredibly smart, world-class team of engineers and product people to make something that actually works to solve the problem. Our technology stack is quite difficult. We have hardware, software, and artificial intelligence, each one of which is difficult in and of itself. And we need to have world-class engineers uh, and product managers to, to build these products. We also have very difficult supply chain and operations. Uh, we manufacture the equipment ourselves in our factory in San Francisco in the mission. Uh, we also have to select and negotiate access to each of the sites in remote locations where we mount these. Uh, systems. We maintain the systems ourselves in a fully turnkey manner, and we have to do that under extreme time pressure because uh, these need to be installed before fire season or they're not going to be effective. The government still has to rely on last century's tools to combat wildfires, and they spend so much money on it still. If you put Pandos technology in the context of broader wildfire mitigation investments, it's very small. Just the top three utilities in California alone are spending $4 billion a year on wildfire mitigation. And most of that spend is not technology. It's burying power lines or uh, vegetation management, rebuilding infrastructure to make it more fire resilient. And that is extremely expensive and takes decades. And the reason that we're seeing so much adoption by our customers is they see Pano Solution as low-hanging fruit. This IoT technology is lightweight, it's fast, it's easy to, easy to deploy, it's relatively affordable, and they can start reducing their wildfire risk today. It should be everywhere. We really see the, um, the obstacle here to full adoption as awareness of the solution and funding. Pano is a case study in the formula for creating great startups. Start with a huge problem that you can see for yourself. Sonia had previously worked at Nest and knew exactly the power of computer vision and low cost cameras, how it could change society. So she put that to work in the most direct way she could think of. And we're glad for it because it will likely result in a real fix for a real problem facing all of us in the world. The way that we have been Responding to fires is outdated and has an opportunity to change, and technology has a role to play in, in creating an evolution in wildfire response. Our customers uh, call us every single day during the summer and say, you pushed us an incident, and this made all the difference. We were able to get to the scene faster, bring in helicopters, contain the fire before it spread to the forest, and keep this from becoming a mega fire. So, it, Pano's solution, it's not, it's not a silver bullet. It's not the only uh, way that we can reduce wildfires. Actually, the good news is that there's many, many technologies and non-technological solutions that can reduce wildfire harm. But Pano's solution actually does really make a difference. It's available today. It's scalable. It's cost effective. And, uh, and it's ready to go. And the only uh, barrier for us uh, spreading this across the globe is, is awareness and funding. So uh, for all of you who are watching this today, the way you can help is to reach out to your local elected officials and tell them that you would like to see Pano in your community. 
check out Pano.ai on the web to get involved. Link in the description below. They're hiring, and if you know people in government or utilities who are focused on this problem, you should send them this video and post it to your social. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye.